This week on ANN, Annual Council 2021 starts at the Adventist Church's World Headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. The Executive Committee of the Adventist Church meets both in person and online to hear reports from the Adventist Church's Secretary, Treasurer, and many others. And we take a special behind-the-scenes look at what it took to produce the 2021 Annual Council Hybrid Session. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the Adventist Church began their annual council business meetings, starting with the LEAD conference late last week. LEAD stands for Leadership, Education and Development. The Department of Adventist Mission presented the conference this year, focusing on Through the Storms, Mission During Crisis. As we have done before, we would like to take a moment to explain what annual council is for those who are watching for the first time. Annual Council is one of the two yearly meetings of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church's Executive Committee. The Executive Committee is the second highest governing body of the denomination. It is second to the delegates of the General Conference in session, which takes place every five years. The Executive Committee is comprised of officers from the World Headquarters, Department Directors, and leaders from the 13 World Territories and other attached fields. Members also include Union Presidents and Presidents of General Conference Institutions. The committee is also comprised of three lay members from each of the 13 rural territories and one pastor from each territory. It includes one additional frontline employee for every 500,000 members and between 30 and 40 members at large. During annual council, members of the committee, commonly referred to as delegates, vote on policies and reports that are necessary for the operation of the church. This year, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the annual council meetings are taking place both in person and online. More on that just a little bit later. To keep up with all of our coverage, make sure you follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Adventist News and Adventist.news. Newly elected Secretary of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, Erton Kohler, opened his secretariat report to the 2021 Annual Council by saying, during the last 18 months, the church has suffered but faced head-on, reinvented itself, and by the grace of God, overcame its challenges. During the secretariat report, Kohler gave many examples of the amazing work the Adventist Church has done globally during the 18 months of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Adventist Church, says Kohler, worked through communication channels, digital ministries, publishing ministries, and Hope Channel, hospitals, clinics, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, schools, and through missionaries to bring people into a personal relationship with Christ and provide life-giving aid. During the Secretariat Report, Director of the Adventist Archives Statistics and Research Department, David Trim, told attendees that there can only be one topic, the impact on the church of the COVID-19 pandemic, what has happened, and what the statistics suggest might happen in the near future. Trim noted the most distinct impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the church could be found when looking at accessions or the number of people coming into the Adventist church. For the first time since 2004, accessions have dropped below 1 million, from 1.3 million in 2019 to just over 800,000 in 2020. In speaking of losses, those who have left or drifted away from the church, Trim noted the decline does not stand out as much as accessions. The more than 560,000 losses from 2020 were a median figure for the past 15 years. While speaking of accessions and losses during a pandemic, Trim also mentioned deaths. Trim noted that while the figures for deaths in 2020 were relatively low, he cautioned we still might not have a full understanding of losses due to death for the past two years. He suggests with congregations unable to meet and records not always kept up with during the pandemic, deaths may not have been recorded by the local church as they were happening, and 2020 deaths are now being added to the deaths for 2021. Trim also noted we now have 56 years of detailed statistics on membership gains and losses, including 2020. Since 1965, our net loss rate of church members are at four out of every 10 or 41%, an aspect in which Trim notes the church must do better. The 2020 Annual Council Secretariat also focused on mission. Even during the pandemic, the Adventist Church continued to train and send missionaries including International Service Employees, or ISEs, 
and Adventist volunteers around the world. While methods have been updated because of the pandemic, Adventists everywhere are still answering the call, I will go. Since March of 2020, 40 new missionaries' families have reached their host locations. Currently, there are more than 370 ISE families around the world. In all levels of administration, education, medical outreach, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, and more. The ISCs have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic with four succumbing to COVID-19. During her presentation, Associate Secretary Karen Porter honored and thanked the ISCs who are serving and gave tribute to those we have lost. Vivid Faith, an initiative that connects people with mission-focused service opportunities, launched in June 2020. Sylvia Fowler-Klein, manager of Vivid Faith, reported that during the first 15 months, Eight organizations had signed up to use it as a recruitment tool. Adventist Volunteer Services, or AVS, also continued to engage volunteers and service. AVS launched a new website and Passport to Mission, online course that was updated in collaboration with the Institute of World Mission. There was also a growth in mission schools around the world, with more than 6,000 new students. AVS also expanded the One Year in Mission project to include the community where the volunteer is located. Now anyone can serve in their local church with local community projects. The final segment of the 2021 Annual Council Secretary Report focused on mission. Director of Adventist Mission Gary Krause started off his report saying, we are praying for a mission that is stronger than crisis. And we've seen in the past year through the pandemic, the Adventist Mission has continued going forward because of people willing to say, I will go. Global mission pioneers are frontline workers who plant churches in new areas and among unreached people groups. Last year, a new church was established every five hours. That means in 2020, more than 1,700 new Adventist churches were organized around the world. A mission priority system is now working to help prioritize mission projects based on mission challenge and unreached people. Krauss announced a new mission dashboard coming soon for church leaders to see the global mission status for their region. Along with the Total Employment Tent Making Program, urban centers of influence are finding new and innovative ways to reach people using Christ's method of ministry. Through the pandemic, the six global mission centers have continued to help divisions reach the large non-Christian people groups in their territories through innovative methods, materials, and models. Krauss wrapped up his report by talking about mission awareness and the communication channels Adventist Mission uses to share how mission offerings are like a river flowing around the globe, bringing life and energy to mission. On Monday of the annual council meetings, Treasurer of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists, Paul Douglas, opened his inaugural treasurer report to the 2021 annual council's executive committee with some good news. He said, in looking at the state of our finances at the end of August, I can report that the financial picture is much stronger today than it was a year ago. Douglas told the hybrid of in-person and virtual delegates, several areas on our financial statement show positive trends year over year, for which we can only give God the glory. While many things contributed to the positive financial outlook for the church, including cash and investment increases, account receivable decrease, and notes receivable decrease, Douglas reported tide being ahead by 5.2% compared to last year. This is 7% more than the church had budgeted to receive. Another positive note was offerings being up by 14.2%, 30% more than the church had budgeted to receive. Douglas also noted that program expenses were down by approximately 10% as compared to this time last year. Those expenses are still 11% higher than what was expected, however. This is due to changes in the exchange rate between the United States, where the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is located, and local currencies where appropriations were sent. The financial markets have provided positive results for us so far this year. Looking to the end of this year and into the next, Douglas believes the positive trends will continue. Many of the treasurers from the Adventist Church's 13 divisions and two attached unions are reporting higher tithe and offering, even when compared to 2019, which would be considered a normal financial year. During his presentation, Doug emphasized the importance of mission and the Adventist Church's strategic plan, I Will Go. 
Along those lines, Douglas announced that GC Treasury is in the early stages of partnering with the Plan Giving and Trust Services Department to craft a plan that will see the GC investing resources in frontline I will go mission activities. These funds would be administered to members in local churches with a special emphasis on activities. Also during the Treasurer's Report, Under Treasurer of the World Church, Ray Wallen, gave a report on budgets and type. Wallen said the approach to the 2022 budget will be with a strong emphasis on mission. In the past, the Adventist Church has usually set the income at 100% of the actual tithe and world mission offerings from two years before. Due to the current state of the world and to avoid taking undue risks, the church will use 100% of 2019's actual income, which will strike a balance between the risk of overstating income potential and the possibility of faster economic recovery. When looking at the budget for 2022, two points need to be highlighted. First is the portion received from the Adventist Church in North America is projected to decrease from 49% to 46%. This is due primarily to the scheduled tithe percentage reduction. Secondly, the South American division will likely be the third largest contributor at 13% in 2022, due to losing approximately 10 million US dollars in currency devaluation. The largest portion of the GC budget goes to regular and special operating appropriations of the 13 world church divisions at GC institutions. While he noted that the required quinquennial review of appropriations will happen within the next 12 to 18 months, the review will be undertaken in full view of the I will go strategic focus document. The bottom line result of the income and expense allocations is a projected loss of 16.4 million US dollars. This is a result of a deliberate plan to absorb from GC reserves or net assets a significant portion of the negative impact of the recent financial disruption due to COVID-19 and the longer term phase in of the new tithe sharing percentages. It is also a 5.3 million US dollar improvement from 2021. The projected loss will be covered from the budget reserve with a transfer of up to 11.5 million US dollars as estimated in the tithe parity plan and a transfer of up to 4.9 million US dollars related to the COVID shortage. To watch this report in full, visit news.adventist.org. To watch all of the meetings from the 2021 Annual Council, please visit executivecommittee.adventist.org. Coming up, we have a behind the scenes look at the 2021 Annual Council. But up next, executive committee members attended the lead conference on mission in crisis. Dear VL, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt though. Which reminds me, are your hands clean? Yes! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19, but it's always nice to be extra safe. Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. Welcome back. President of the Adventist World Church, Ted N.C. Wilson, opened the annual council session on leadership, education, and development, or the LEAD conference this year, asking delegates to lean on the master of the universe in times of trouble and not take your eyes off Christ or his goal for the church. This sentiment was echoed throughout the conference, which centered on the theme, Through the Storms, Mission During Crisis. 
This theme was divided into two sections, Storms from the Past, presented Thursday night, October 7, and Current and Future Crises, presented Friday morning, October 8. Held both in person and on online this year, program host Tiffany Brown welcomed attendees and emphasized that instead of lectures, this year's conference would focus on case studies, stories, and testimonies of pastors and church leaders to teach and inspire others to embrace resilience and courage in difficult times. During Thursday night's program, pastors from across the world shared both personal and historical stories of Adventists and Christians who endured persecution, violence, and disease, yet retained a strong faith. Relating these experiences to the current political and health crisis sweeping our globe, there was an overwhelming sense of hope and encouragement throughout the program that despite difficulties and trials, God will bless his people. Changing gears with a new theme, current and future crisis, Friday morning showcased the important work of dozens of Adventist pastors and members across the globe during the COVID-19 crisis. Although this year's lead conference revealed many of the challenges individuals and churches have undergone during the COVID-19 pandemic, it left viewers with a tangible sense of hope and encouragement. A solemn moment towards the end of the lead conference was a video in dedication to those Adventist employees and missionaries who lost their lives during the COVID-19 pandemic. Visibly moved, Wilson asked those in the auditorium and online to stand, while he and Ertun Kohler and Paul Douglas, secretary and treasurer respectively of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, laid out in a prayer for the families of those who have died and those who are suffering from the coronavirus. For service. You know the crises that will come in the future, but you know that the mission will continue during these crises because you will take us through the storms. As we have mentioned, this year's annual council meetings of the executive committee were held both online and in person due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The meetings were streamed over five different Zoom channels in Portuguese, French, Spanish, Russian, and English. This obviously took a lot of work and planning. We owe so much to our technical team who worked hard to make sure that each of the executive committee members were able to participate in the meetings. Now we have a backstage pass to see what it took to produce this huge feat.
Coming up, Ashley Chisholm is here with This Week in Adventist History. But up next, Adventist Mission shares about the Adventist Learning Center in Lebanon. Why is there evil in the world? Are Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I Believe Bible. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh Day Adventists. Welcome back. The Adventist Learning Center is a school for refugee kids located in Lebanon. The school has impacted more than 450 refugee children since 2013. Adventist Mission has more. It's a miracle, actually. It was a Tuesday afternoon, and Fatima El Kholi, a Syrian mom from Aleppo, had convinced a friend to change her plans for the day, not knowing how crucial that decision would be for them. At 6 p.m. of August 4, 2020, a gigantic explosion hit Beirut, the capital of Lebanon, leaving a large radius of destruction, taking more than 150 lives and leaving thousands injured. I was with my friend in Hamra Street. We had something to do. Then we decided to go shopping, but luckily we went to a store that had a basement. When the sound started, I thought the building was crumbling. People started screaming. There was panic. People were saying it was an explosion. My friend was screaming and running, but for me it was a different situation because I felt as if I was shocked. And when they said explosion, the bad pictures of the war in Syria crossed my mind. I was stuck, standing, and did not know how to walk. The sounds and feelings caused by explosions were sadly too familiar for Fatima. She had to leave her bombarded home back in Syria and find safety for her family in Lebanon a few years ago. Now she works at the Adventist Learning Center, a school for refugee kids, impacting positively more than 450 refugee children since 2013. This is a center for learning. I teach the Arabic language and help with translation, but I see the center as more than a learning center. It is like a big home for children. We usually go and visit our students' parents, and most of the parents that live in the neighborhood of Burj Hamoud have very small houses, so children here have a bigger space to play, do activities, have fun, and go outside. In spite of Lebanon's current instability and the threat of COVID-19, the Adventist Learning Center was preparing to start classes soon. Fatima's friend was supposed to help get the classrooms ready that day. She was supposed to come with another lady to prepare the center for the new school year, but I convinced her to come with me instead. When we were there and the explosion happened, she was very scared and wished she hadn't come with me. But when we came here to the center and saw the damage, she was praising God that she was with me instead. Especially this classroom that we are standing in right now. This classroom has three tables for kids ages six and seven. When we came and saw the glass was shattered, I said, thank God the kids were not here because for sure there would have been injuries. The teachers and staff of the Learning Center believe God can make all things work together for good. 
I hope and plead to God to use His divine power not only to fix the situation in our center, but also in Lebanon. Lebanon is a beautiful country and I love it a lot, and I consider it my second home. God willing, everything will be fixed and our kids here will have a new opportunity to have hope in life again and a good future. Our place here, like I said before, is more than a learning center. It's a source of love, optimism, and hope, not only for us as teachers, but also for the kids and their parents. God willing, everything will be rebuilt and the situation will get better. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Ashley Chisholm for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about the life and ministry of Tims and Alice Ludgate. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On October 14, 1925, only a little over a month after they were married, Tims Kenneth and Alice Audrey Ludgate set sail for northwestern India. There they were stationed in the city of Surat, and the reviews pages are full of articles signed T.K. Ludgate, telling of their experiences in that city, where he worked as an evangelist and Audrey worked part-time in a medical dispensary. During this time, they had two children, Mary and Donald. The couple spent a total of 15 years in India, then moved to the United States, where T.K. first studied at Washington Missionary College now Washington Adventist University, and then at the seminary, while Audrey worked as a nurse's aide at Washington Sanitarium and then kept house. After attaining those degrees, TK taught Bible and Greek at Southern Missionary College, now Southern Adventist University. In 1946, the Ludgates then traveled to South Africa, where TK headed the Department of Religion at Helderberg College, and Audrey did Bible work and assisted the college's librarian. They returned to the States in early 1953, where TK did pastoral work in the Potomac Conference until he became the Associate Professor of Religion at Walla Walla College, now University, a position he held until 1970. TK Ludgate died in 1972, and Audrey Ludgate died in 1996. Their stories come from this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study. Just go to YouTube and search the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 4. The passage says, This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care. Everybody.